even everyone. Is it that, sir? Morning later. No class today. We were to do something else constructive or use the time to work on our essay.
Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I didn't hear an, a response. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. All right. How is everybody? Good night, sir. Is it, is it night yet? No, it's not night yet. It's still evening. Uh, night is at eight o'clock, right? I think I. Sorry, have any dinner? Can you ask? Oh, do you have any funny snack? Anything you want to share? You know, how was your day? My day was good. How was your day? My I have a spitting headache. I'm kind of hungry now. Well, I have a spitting headache. Um, oh, Jesus. So, so I, will okay, say, I want some tea or gas. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, it's I suffer from insomnia, so I don't get enough rest. So I usually have migraine. All right. Um, so in the last class, I think we were discussing uh, discourse analysis. No, well, not discourse analysis, but we were talking about types of discourse and the purposes of discourses, for example, exposition, description, narration, and argumentation. Am I correct? Hello, am I correct? Yes, sir, you are correct. Right, so we spoke about that. And I think I actually gave you some work to do in terms of um, choosing one of your sources and identifying three organizational strategies. I'm almost sure that that's the homework. Am I correct? At least I know I'm correct. Um, I know just nobody, no one is responding. Am I correct or is it that I'm correct but persons are unwilling to say? Sorry, I'm correct. Okay, all right. But before we get to that, we can actually look at an example together. And then if anything, you can revisit what you have just to make sure that it is in sync with in terms of analysis. Let me just bring up my lecture. Uh, come one. Um, lectures. This would have been lecture two. Let me just briefly go back through lecture two. Well, I'm not going to do everything, but just to refresh your recollection. My God, you mean you guys were not hearing me and I was I was having a ball of a time. You were not hearing me a while ago? Oh, Lord. I no, go. sir. No, sir. Oh, <laughs> no, sir. Oh, Lord. And I was having so much fun. Oh, I was talking to myself. So let me go from the beginning. Okay. All right. So we started looking at um, researching for academic purposes. And we mentioned the fact that you are participating in conversations or academic conversations in the discipline and or across the discipline or, or discipline specific 
um, exploring discipline specific conventions. We mentioned as well the notion of stages in writing or the writing process. And I did say that that is what you're engaging in and you're at, you have completed the first stage and you're at the second stage. Um, the other stages will come over time. The research process involves consulting sources, understanding what the sources have to say, determining how the sources can help you to have a conversation on the subject matter, whether it be your broad topic and your narrow topic, and that we have to look at the relevance, the, the currency, and the scholarship um, of sources that are consulted. I did say that I'm going to teach you this um, in a separate lecture or two. And we looked at, I think this was really to assist the persons who are new. These are examples of broad topics. And we did say that these are some of the terms that are used to narrow those broad topics. And these are examples of narrow topics. And I'm moving a little faster because we spoke about the fact that there are four main types of, of writing, quote unquote, four main types of writing. And your you are more focused uh, on exposition, which is the paper that you're writing, expository essay. And we looked at the purposes of each and that for you to remember the four main types, you just need to remember Edna or DNA E, which is exposition, description, narration, argumentation, slash persuasion. And that these are all examples of discourse and that discourse is anything written and or spoken on a subject matter or issue. We looked at the various functions of each type of discourse modes. And we looked at the fact that description and narration are not only figurative in nature or imaginative in nature, but you do have scientific and or technical description. You do have scientific and or technical narration. These are just examples of the, of the different types of discourse modes. Um, and I, I think the, one of the class activities that you got to do was to explain or to identify or to state the reason for writing and what is it that you hope to accomplish and the audience. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned, which will um, come out when we go a little bit deeper, is something called global organization, where you look at your subclaims and arrange them either in either in the notion of least important to most important or most important to least important you um have to do that um that is something that i deliberately did mention at the time but you should bear that in mind that there's something called global organization where your points are arranged in a kind of domino effect way either from least important to most important or most important to least important. So some of you might need to look back at your, your um, look back at your, how you have organized the subclaims. You might need to do that. The, these are just examples from exposition. And we did go through this particular process uh, from in terms of drafting a thesis and what the thesis is. Did we talk about this? Or just remind me, I want to remember if we spoke about this part. Hello? No, sir. All right, so in terms of the, the thesis, in terms of the thesis, right, so it says define the thesis is narrow enough to be supported within the word limit of the essay at the end of the introduction. So in other words, all of us who have a thesis statement, you actually have the last sentence of your introduction. Um, and then you have the distinct controlling idea, which are the topic sentences related to the thesis. Well, no, the thesis is, a con is considered the controlling idea. 
of the paper. In other words, it tells the reader what the paper is about. And then it is the thesis that is late further dissected into topic sentences that really fleshes out the ideas that are stated in the thesis. And then of course, there's a conclusion, but we're not there yet. And this now talks about discourse modes. And this is what is called discourse analysis where you are identifying, and I want for you to write it down for me, um, writers, uh, that's not writers, writers main idea, writers main idea, purpose, organizational, organization no, slash language strategies. You're typing on something else, sir? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it in the chat. Oh, oh, okay. So audience, you might comment on tone, you might comment on register, you might comment on diction. Uh, okay, what else? All right, those are some of the things in terms of discourse analysis. And when we talk about discourse analysis, it means that you are given a piece of um, discourse, whether it be a song, a poem, a book, an article, and you're trying to make sense of the, of the decisions of the writer. It's called discourse analysis. And analysis means to break something, a whole into various parts to make meaning out of it. So, we will look at an example of this and the persons who are here at the very beginning of the class. Do you remember when we looked at the song Reparation by Vibes Cartel? Yes, yes sir. sir. Right, so that was really introducing you to what is called discourse analysis. I just didn't use the term at the time. Sir, so is that, sorry to put it, yes. is that time or time? T-I-N-E you have here or is it T-I-N-E? Where? In the chat that you just posted, writers mean I Oh, tone, tone, tone. Okay. Because I was, okay. talking, I was tone. typing very fast. It's okay. Because I'm typing a little bit fast. So it's tone. So, so you can analyze a piece of discourse, whether it be exposition, whether it be this, um, narration, description, or argumentation. All right. And what it helps you to do is to look at the decisions that are made by writers. And then on the other side, now, you have to become the it says is one sentence that's the very important that you understand that it is one sentence and that it establishes the or it includes the ss subject so you might say if your broad topic is artificial intelligence and your narrow topic is how facial recognition technology impacts crime something like that then the facial recognition technology is the actual artificial intelligence which is the subject all right, reflects your purpose of writing, establishes the focus or position and uses specific language and may include, usually include subdivisions. The thesis statement is not a topic or a title and should not, um, it has basic requirements. We just spoke about these, not merely factual and it's not an announcement of intention. So you don't say this paper will focus on or my paper will discuss. You don't do that in um, for this course. Uh, can you tell which of the two is a thesis based on what we just said and based on your own experiences and introduction to writing thesis statements? I'm listening. Don't rush. The second one, what why you choose the second one versus the first one? All right. So 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 with that that sound as if it's just answering a question. The first one sound as if it's just answering a question, while the second one actually gives you the three ideas or three points. Three subclaims. Um, subclaims, yes, in it. So of course, you know that is what we'll be using to, to flesh out into the body of the, the, the essay. All right, that's correct. Thanks for that. All right, and and there's these are just indicating to you when they say what these these are announcements of intention, but not thesis statements. So in this essay, I will this essay intends I'm going to examine what I intend to develop. My intention is to write. You'll find that these statements, these announcements, are accepted in other disciplines. 
for example, in social sciences or even at the master's level, you literally have to say something like this, like this paper will focus on how Jamaican culture is represented in um, North American movies or in the North American movie, um, you know, where, whichever North American movie. So in other disciplines, there is the, an announcement is accepted. In this course, you cannot do any announcement. All right. So we're not saying that it's wrong in all instances. We're just saying for the purposes of academic writing in this course, you can't do any announcement. The which of the two is the better thesis statement? Sure, although TV commercials are necessary, most of them are irritating, insulting, or dangerous. All right, that's correct. Which of the which? Let me ask you a question. If you were to identify, if you were to say, if 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 thesis number two is a uh, it would fit into an expository essay, uh, a narrative essay, or a descriptive essay, or a persuasive essay. Which one do you think it would fit, and why? In other words, which discourse mode would um, does this thesis reflect? Essay. It can be an expository essay. So if one person says exposition, anybody else? Or argumentative. All right, so we're hearing um, exposition, we're hearing argumentation. Persuasive. Persuasive. Why do you say persuasion? Because the person is saying that it is irritating, insulting. It is their feeling. Right. So, so thanks for that. The right. Thanks for that. So it is argumentation. Remember, argumentation is one form of persuasion. All right. So it is argumentation because of the diction, irritating, insulting, or dangerous. Those are terms that are usually not necessarily used in expository writing. So a perfect example of exposition are your textbooks, like the book that you use for accounts or for international business or for psychology or for supply chain management, you realize that what they're doing, they're giving you information. They're not arguing, right? They're not arguing in the book. They're giving you information, which is one, um, which is one of the purposes of um, exposition to educate, quote unquote. So this would be an example of um, argumentation. So writing the thesis statement, and we, and we did all of this already. We went from narrative, topic, question, assertion, thesis. I, did, I taught you this without doing it via the slides. Um, so these are just examples of that. I don't know that I need to go back through. Um, we're not ready to write our introduction yet. I, that's something that I will teach you. We are somewhere here in terms of our development, but there are some, there are, there are some things that you need to learn before we go there. Um, references, there are two things when it comes on to um, your ideas in your outlines. So you have citations, which is something that you have been introduced to, but I haven't taught you every single thing, but I've taught you referencing um, in its fullest form. The, this is now where this part is very critical in terms of organizing an exposition or an argument. So these are called organizational um, structures or language structures. I'm using the wrong term. Those are not the terms. Um, they're called language strategies. Oh God, I'm getting old. Or organizational strategies. So analysis, cause and effect, classification, comparison, contrast, process. But did I, did I not teach you this already? I'm almost sure. Is it this class? Yes, or the... sir. Right. Yes, right. sir. We got that last week. So. Right. Yes, because I, I I remember they gave us a slide with it with the with the strategies. No, no. I I, I don't I don't know. Just give you a slide. I actually explained everything. It was more uh, than a slide. It's it's in the WhatsApp group too as well. Right. So, but I'm saying in terms of my speaking, if you, oh yeah, did I upload the recording? I think so. Even in terms of explanation, though, I did give you. Uh, sir. Yes. I don't think you upload um our last recording. I was looking for it today, but I didn't see it. No, it wasn't. It wasn't uploaded. Okay. All right. Send no, a reminder in the WhatsApp group, and I look for it. Sometimes I'm so overwhelmed with all kinds of 
every day we have meetings and stuff. Um, so sometimes I really forget. Oh, you know, I never asked you um, your opinion. Um, how do you guys um, do you? Well, how do you guys feel about one tra what transpired? Don't, you don't have to retell what transpired. We all know what happened at the campus. So we're not talking about the actual, we don't need the details, the gory details of that. I'm really asking you about your impression of the institution or how you feel about what happened at the institution. The unfortunate incident that transpired last week, Thursday. Sir, good evening. I think they need to implement new security measures. That's my view. All right. We're actually doing that. Um, I was in a meeting today, and there's a range of um, security um, protocols that have been established. And Would that include the use of a walkthrough metal detector, sir? <laughs> no. Sir, I think they need to have that. Have well, let me, not, let, let me not say because one of the things that we don't want to do is to disclose what exactly what we are implementing because it's like announcing to potential um, criminals what you're going to do, um, choreographing what you're going to do, and then vague and say, so, oh, they have metal detector. Okay, we can Sir, find that. That is so that. right, and that is the reason why I do not understand why on social media, oh. the government them disclose everything. They have to disclose. In the case of the government, though, they have to because people have constitutional rights and you have to educate, you have to inform the public. I should not be driving to my community or driving on a road and the police will stop me and say, okay, it is now a, a state of emergency and I can be detained for 24 hours without reason. So you have to inform the public about their constitutional rights because it's unfair to them and the state can be sued. So think about it. I teach, I lecture at Excelsior. The government did not announce anything. I, I grew up in Tivoli. I drive go down to Tivoli or drive go down to Denham Town to look for my nephews and my sister. I'm detained for two to three days without cause, without explanation. I can sue the state because I can say that I was not properly informed. These are things that affect people's fundamental rights and freedoms in terms of movement and all of that. So you have to. In the case of the government, we can't blame them. They have to inform the public. It's like the police turning on the siren and people say, well, the man knows them present sometimes. They, I think by law, they have to. By law, they have to. No, All right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really, as I said, I'm not sure how many persons got a chance to attend um, the principal's hour, but it's the first we have ever had something like that happening on the compound. First, in the history of the college, the first, first, first time. Really unfortunate. And the good thing, what I did um, in my capacity as a person in charge of marketing and communication, I paid attention to what was being said in the media and what was being said on social media by persons who were commenting on what transpired. And for the most part, nobody was blaming the institution or saying the institution was not doing enough or was unsafe. People just know that Jamaica is a crime-ridden place and anywhere criminals want to get you, they're not going to get you. Because had it not been on the compound, she probably would have been shot elsewhere because a person came for her or persons came for her. So if it wasn't on the compound, it would have been elsewhere. It's really unfortunate. Jamaica is a scary place. Very, very scary place. I know we might have police officers in the, in the class. And this is where I like um, America's, um, I think they call it what? Their First Amendment. Is it First or Second Amendment? I can't remember. Let me see if it's First or Second Amendment. US. So how is she doing? Um, as far as I know, she's okay. Let's see. Second okay. Amendment. Right, Second Amendment, right to bear arms. And, you know, the, in Jamaica, we tend, the, the FLA insists on not allowing too many people having Something guns. Like that, yeah. I, I don't know why. I think law abiding citizens should. Um, good thing you left, Shane. Um, the ironic thing is that when I was physically in Jamaica, I was always, I was always on the compound walking up and down. Um, but the FLA says that the country, because of the type of people we are, they don't want every and anybody to have guns. But I'm saying if, if I have a gun and a criminal has a gun, he or she would probably think twice before approaching me. But because they know I am unarmed and they are armed, then of course it makes um, the unarmed person become um, more vulnerable or a potential victim of a crime. So we just have to hope for the best and be safe in, in, in all that we do, because as I said, 
it's not just on the campus. Everywhere you turn in Jamaica, there is a uh, there's reason to fear. There is reason to fear. Yeah, there. Despite yes. what FLA say, um, they are just going too hard. When I think so. Look, when they're gonna look and they're gonna even look at law persons, um, persons that's in that's in enforcing the law and even gonna reject your application, you're like, yo, it don't make no sense. Like you're a police officer. Uh, you are uh, could have gone like every single day, but you can't give me a license for your arm. Exactly, and you are even at more at risk. You are with a rifle every yeah. single day. Yeah, exactly. So, what, what are you trying to say? I'm not fit enough to get a license for your arm, but I'm fit enough to walk around with an high powered weapon. Right, exactly. That's and you guys are even at more risk because um, when you're arresting people, you're arresting somebody, and then some persons have to take the bus, some persons have to go to the public, you are you are at risk, because some criminals are not afraid to take you on, you know, some of them, they're not going to say, see the boy, the way they arrest we are, or the boy, they shoot my friend, or, you know, because some of them, are, they will tell you that they are walking dead, you know, so it's really strange how they operate, you know, it's very difficult to get a licensed firearm, very, very difficult, and for what reason, I don't know, um, my thing is that once you clear certain hurdles, um, you should get a licensed firearm. I know that when I was there, I was scared out of my daylights. When I was going to the, like the supermarket, I didn't walk with any wallet. I just walked with the credit card, just the credit card, nothing else. Or if, and sometimes if I'm there at, when I go to the supermarket and if I can't manage, cause I wasn't driving at the time and I can't manage to carry the bags, one of the, the person who normally packs me, I said to him, so here we go on, boss. Give me five bills, lend me five bills until I come back or lend me a thousand dollars. And he said, all right, teach. And he give me, and I jump on the taxi and I'm back home because I was like, because where I live, I, I, where I still live, I live off Reddell's Road. And the bike boy them on Reddell's Road, you know them. They are just there out in their numbers. It's crazy. Yes. So is it someone definitely on the um, that works that the place um, at the college got shot? Yes, one of our administrators. Really? Yeah. So it's our cause all of that. It means some problem with somebody or it's just somebody want to rob him or something, come shoot him or rob him or something. Put away, you did that. You don't read paper. What is wrong with this girl? You don't read oh, no, sir. Sir, no paper. You know, work, come work, sir. <laughs> You well, it's a female who was shot. Never send me this, I wouldn't know if you never send it in other group. Come many even watch you, sir. It's a female who got shot. Is a female? Yes. She, I, uh, well, some people say she got three shots. Some say she got eight shots. Is so she dead? No, she's alive. Thank God. Yeah, she's critical, but alive. And alive so far. So she has. she's a young mother. We are hoping for the best, you know. Um, we don't want any child to be left motherless. And my view is that children deserve to be raised by their mothers and fathers. But the mothers are so needed in the in the life of the child. Uh, even though you yeah, say um, if we have gun or someone with a thing to come near this already a box all with them shoot a man that a teacher that had a light um less of firearm and kill him. No, so they didn't know that he had a license firearm, but he actually saved the life of the other person. He actually saved it. I know the person. He's actually a, a, a colleague of mine who I've interacted with because I used to go into the schools and talk to the students about coming to Excelsior. So I knew him. I was very shocked when I heard that he was murdered. It was very, 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 very shocking. Um, I think this is kind of scary. It is. It's, it is very, very scary. Very, very scary. I tell you, I tell you, when I was there, I was, I was all, I was actually, and I don't really talk about it, but I was actually murdered in 2011. I was stabbed eight times. So I know what it is to like go so close to death. Um, it was a very, very scary thing for me. I so did you give your life to the Lord? What does my step? So first of all, sir you're making mention, a lot. Sir mentioned in the class that right. he's not a Christian. All right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. So make no assumption about my religious convert um conviction. All right. I'm not I'm not atheist and um so I'm not against religion or I don't say there's no God. I just I'm irreligious, which means I take no position on the matter. I prefer to leave it as is and don't start preaching. All right. Everybody's entitled to how they feel about certain things. Um, so as I said, I was saying before, I know what it is to come so close to death. 
um, eight stabs, and that and eight stabs because only eight penetrated, because some of the other stabs I literally had to fight um, to ensure that I wasn't, you know, stabbed in very what I call soft areas, areas where you know that if you get a stab there, you're going to literally die. So, so you were being robbed. I was being robbed. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I, when I'm, as I said, when I'm in Jamaica, I'm, I'm I am paranoid. Beautiful. I am paranoid when I'm there. I, uh, when I'm in the last half, when I was before I left, I bought a car and I was like, when I'm driving, when I used, even after the incident, when I, when I was driving, I never drive with my windows down. Never. I don't care how high the gas price is. I never ever drive with my windows down. Never ever 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 ever. My windows are never down. And once I go into my house, I lock up. Even when I go into the bathroom and the main door is locked, I still lock the bathroom door. If I am in my house and I hear one sound, I'm getting up and I'm searching down the entire place. So I, it's it's a very, as I said, Jamaica is a scary place in terms sure, of but crime. I would not recommend that though. What? Sir, you say if you hear one sound, you're getting up and searching the entire Yeah, because I want to ensure, I'm, I'm not searching unarmed. I'm not searching unarmed. But I hope you have a dog, you sir. Have, you have you have a dog in the um, yard. But you, can, but you, you guys can. need to understand what sir is saying. Situation caused him to be that way. And after yeah, yeah, yeah. certain things, you have When you to experience understand. it for yourself, it's a, it's a different reality. You see the world you have, differently. You have to understand. Sure, but yeah. that, that, that is not a, a very good thing to do. I would not recommend that as a person. Everyone is different. I agree. That, I hear... Yeah, go that ahead, is, finish your thought. That is all criminals lore. That is all criminals lore persons out. Yeah, I know when so what I what do I mean? I am not going to hear a sound and come out of my house. That's not going to happen. I don't do that. So once I go in and I lock, even my neighbors, because I when I was there, I lived in an apartment complex. If somebody knocks on my door, if you don't answer, that door is not opening. And even when you answer, I'm going to look through. I have a little window thing. I'm going to look through and see if, who it is. And if you have company and I don't know the company, the door is not going to be open either. Unless it's my neighbor, like a neighbor. Because, you know, my neighbors were good. Um, we were not Sir, friends. When they, friends knock, but... when they knock and say, who is it? And they say, it's John Brown. So what's the password? No, they don't have to say password. You know, I, as I say, how my complex was designed is that you have, first of all, you need a bus to come on the compound and then you need a key to come upstairs because I used to live upstairs. Um, the only time I think one Christmas before I migrated, because I've been living in Canada for, from 2019, but I've been back to Jamaica a few times. One Christmas, I was in my apartment and I heard a knock on the door and unconsciously I opened the door and it was a lady, an old lady begging. And I was like, how did you reach upstairs? Because I'm saying, how did the two checkpoints, how did she manage to reach upstairs? So if, it, if, if the gate was left open, because you know sometimes you, when a bus, you're driving, the gate is left open, um, but the grill downstairs, the, the, the grill downstairs is supposed to be locked. And I remember calling the landlord and I said to him, say, here we're going, boss. I am not paying so much money to feel unsafe. I deliberately moved from where I was living before to come in a more secure space, I'm willing to pay. I was willing to pay more, so I want to feel safe. And my neighbors, you know, some of them were very cavalier in terms of not feeling that because they never had my experience. But I can tell you, even if I have friends at my house, we have friends coming over, I remember one of my bridging, he's into music and he knocked on my, and I don't know, and I, I was so upset with him. I said, how did you reach upstairs? Because I don't want to know. I want to know that I can control who gets access in my space. And it's very different when I'm in Canada. I really don't worry about that. Of course, I'm not going to go to places like Jane and Finch where they kill people because you do have criminals in Canada too. But for the most part, you feel a sense of security. You don't feel unsafe. You feel what you feel, what I experience more is what I call polite racism. That's what I really experience every day. You know, So all persons who are not black, once they see a black man or a black woman, they see a criminal. I've seen persons walk in the middle of the road because they don't want to walk near you or that kind of thing. Those idiots I can deal with. I can deal with those idiots. Normally, I say, if, if it comes to the test, I'll just sue and get rich. Simple. If you come with your racism and it offends me in a certain way and I can prove that, you know, this thing caused me to feel any way or you racially profiled me, like let it be a restaurant or whatever, I'll just sue. Simple. That's what you do with those persons. But in Jamaica, I tell you, 
It's it's very, very, I remember even when I used to teach in the nights, when I finished, I used to pack up my car with some of the female students. I said, okay, let's, I'm going to drop in half a tree because I'm like, it's very dangerous when we used to have classes on campus and like classes end nine o'clock and then the females, some of them have to go across the road where they have the play field. And sometimes the guys just jump, grab the phone and jump back the wall. It was a very scary, it was very, very scary. But this, as I said, the campus itself was relatively safe because there was a kind of gentleman's agreement between the college and the surrounding communities that, you know, you don't come onto the compound and do certain things. Yeah. So I'm just saying that, you know, um, it happened very unfortunate. I know the young lady, um, she's my co coworker. Um, I'm part of the reason why she was even up employed because she came through the call center. I had helped to train her and she kind of slowly moved up the rank in terms of ending up in, she was working in the registry. So it's really unfortunate that that happened. But, you know, the persons came for um, her and she could miss it. Whether it be on the compound or in elsewhere, she would have missed it. Sir. She wouldn't have missed it at all. Yes. Is the, 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 um, the little small brown girl working at the weather call? So, for our collective money? No, that's not the person. And I'm not going to tell you who it is, all right? <laughs> so I won't tell you. If you don't know, you won't get it from me, all right? It's best when we don't circulate or speak too much about. I just, I, as I said, I'm speaking in generalities. I don't want to zoom in on the actual person um, because mm. that's, that might yeah. that might not <clears throat> help. Sir. Yes. Sir, how mm -hmm. are the persons who were in the office taking it now? Oh, how them coping? Well, um, we are doing we are doing a series of trauma sessions. So the day after there was a session, the guidance counselors have been doing some stuff. The ministry came in, and then there's another session going on tomorrow. I can tell you that they took it very hard because um, one of the persons. Well, first of all, the the person who came to her. Um, so she, somebody came, so let me give you an example, or I'll give you a scenario. So let's just say that I work in the registry, and I know you know student affairs, right? And I'm at my desk, and you are, let's just say, for example, um, Anika works in the registry as well. And, and I'm at my desk, and Anika is coming inside, and somebody stops Anika and say, oh, you know, call Robin for me. I'm here to see Robin. And of course, Anika is not thinking anything because... It's normal for persons to come and ask for different persons in the registry because it could be people want their transcript or a grade outstanding or whatever it is, an application form, whatever it is. And Anika says, oh, Robin, you know, somebody come to you. I get up from my, I look, see the person, get up from my desk, go to the person, talk to the person, even hug the person. Not knowing that the hug that I give the person, I was actually, the person was using the hug to ID me. The moment I walk, step off, walk off from that person, the shooter comes around and start, gives me the first shot. I run off, gives me two more and probably five more. All right, so they're taking it um, really, really bad people because some people, even though they hear gunshot, they have never heard it so up close. And I don't know how many of you have ever, well, other than the police officers, I grew up in Tivoli, so I know what gunshot is like. When it's very close, it's not the nicest sound. When it's a distance, you know, you can, you know, but when it's very close in your ears, it's very scary. Unless you're used to the sound, trust me, it can be quite tra um, traumatizing. So we have, we have been Sorry, having a number of, of, of sessions. Yes? Near top 10? No, I never used to live near top 10. I won't tell you exactly where that's on. <laughs> no, I, I, not, not near top 10 at all. Not near top 10 at all. So, and, so we have been doing some sessions. We have been doing some sessions um, just to, um, it, I tell you, it's going to take some time for any of those staff members to even go back into that office and feel safe. Because I don't know how do you, I remember when I came out of the hospital, um, it took me months. First of all, I didn't go straight home because I couldn't go home. I called my sister and I said to her, um, can you just go to the apartment and rearrange the house for me and just tidy it up and do everything different? And my sister went there, she washed the blood up sheet, she did this, she fixed up the place. It, she did a whole different, a whole range of stuff for me. And I still, Sir, I still- you, thought, you got brought inside your home? Yeah, this was an apartment complex where there was no gate. 
Yeah. And it sound like you were targeted then. It could be. It could be. Um, and I remember when I came out of the hospital, I went to a friend's house for about three weeks because I was like, I'm not going home. And then he eventually said to me, you know, my wife and I, we, we, we love you, but <laughs> you got to go home now. <laughs> you got to face the music. You know, you have to go back. Uh, to know. It was very difficult to go home. Um, and it's something, as I say, I don't go into gory details about it because, trust me, it's not the nicest experience. So I can't just imagine what they will face when they actually go back onto the physical component and having to go into the office. And every time that glass door opens, trust me, <laughs> every single time, and if somebody goes like they go to their waist to take up like a book or whatever, or a form or a pen, I'm telling you, some of them are going to relive that moment. They're going to relive that moment. They probably need to probably change up the office because it helped me. I had to change up my, my apartment. Eventually I moved out because I never felt safe at the place. Never felt safe. Anyhow, Enough of that. Any other comments, questions in relation to the matter that we're speaking about before we move on? So the, for the persons who can speak about crime in Jamaica, what is the experience like um, in discharging your duties, if you can so speak? Let's hear it from the law enforcement side. And this is not taking away from the, the lecture. We're having a moment, we're just talking. Any law enforcement person can actually speak yes, about sir. it from their end. Yes. I'm just formulating my words, correct? Just talk. You don't need to formulate your words. No. <laughs> just talk. No. Crime. Crime in Jamaica is a very ugly monster, right? And we as a nation is looking at it at a completely, we, we are looking at it from a completely wrong angle. We are not looking at crime at a right angle. And I've always said, first of all, um, the persons that come from the so-called ghettos are looked down on, right? And even when trying to join these law enforcement, it's almost as if there is a stereotype to say that you're from a bad community. So you might bring a little bit of corruption on the job. But really and truly, crime in the ghetto only can be solved that pers from persons that comes from the ghetto. That is my belief. When you have grown in the ghetto and you understand the codes and you understand the whole culture, tradition, everything about the ghetto, you know working in that ghetto. You don't have to work in the exact ghetto, but I'm just talking a ghetto from overall. Things become clearer. You know the type of persons that you're looking for. You know what the citizens in the ghetto is all about you know all the secret codes you pretty much know the whole setup of the ghetto right when they take persons from country from up class part of society and you put these persons in the ghetto these persons don't know anything about the ghetto they could have trained like you could have, you could have got America go train with Delta Force, you know. But you let know me push back a little bit on some of what yeah. you're saying. So, first of all, I don't think that most of the members who join the police force are uptown. No, uh, you still have a lot of downtown, but I'm just saying that that is the type of feeling that they give you. Um, and the other thing too, I would say in terms of pushing back to a lot of the crimes that are committed in Jamaica are actually committed by persons who are uptown, not downtown. It's just that the executors are from downtown but i've always for example where do ghetto people get guns from guns are expensive bullets are expensive most oh, of them yeah. can't i know i know a whole leap of criminals and they can't even afford to buy to, to, to cook sunday dinner but they have guns and you wonder then how do you get it must be that somebody in uh, in, in authority at the ports for example it must be somebody in in a position of power that is allowing these things to come into the country because yeah ordinary the ordinary poor man can't afford to buy a gun 
It's very expensive. It's a very, very expensive thing. Guns are very, very expensive. It's a very expensive um, thing to buy. So, so, yes, sir, that's fuck. The, the finances are normally from the uptown, from 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 foreign. You know, ship down them barrels and stuff, right? Um, you have yeah, well, no, um, yeah, big speedboats that brings in guns yeah. on a regular, and poor people know one them big speedboats. They have mm -hmm. speedboats. We yeah, part, another part of our challenge is that them. yeah another right. part of our challenge is that jamaica is is the only caribbean island i don't know how many of you know this jamaica is the only caribbean island surrounded by the caribbean sea the only one in other words you can enter the country from any parish and that's another difficulty or challenge for law enforcement and an easy way for guns to come into the country well sir well yes that 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 really isn't a problem you know you're right. right. That's uh, why the goods are coming in from Haiti. There are certain points that they won't interfere from. E from example, um, like on the coast from Sentan going down, they won't enter from that side because the seas are normally rough on that side. So what they mm -hmm. would do, they would enter from the side like St. Catherine, Kingston, Portland, they would enter from those sides. They won't mm -hmm. enter on the side where you have St. Anne, Anovas, and those countries. Okay. Somebody else was about to say something. I, know that, um, I heard another male voice. You were saying? Um, sir. Yes. Just to add to something you said when you said persons navigate the car of um, <laughs> they actually have money to show part and save the money just to buy it. So, like, the brother, get very hungry and put um, see if there's a bird or yeah, put my beast as a bird just to get them. Well, like, well, that may be true, though, but when you think about one community having over 200 guns, they can't say for 200 guns because 200 guns might be about 3 million, 4 million, 5 million dollars, plus the bullets and the bullets are that they need to have. Um, consistently to fight wars, you know, whether it be community wars or inter-gang wars or whatever, those things, um, that is very difficult. They can save to buy one gun, but can they save to buy 20 guns? I think what you need to do are, some persons are not aware of some of the, the, the actual research that has been done on crime and violence in the Caribbean by uh, Professor Harriet, if I remember correctly, when I was in sixth form, I did some reading on his work. Um, and it's far more sophisticated than we think. It's far more um, entrenched in certain institutions. And people say the police force is corrupted, but it's, it's not just the police force because the police, fo the police work with other people. All right, it's entrenched. And then another thing too, when you have, for example, um, government officials, 200 million going missing, 300 million going missing, then some people say, then if they're a thief, why should I not do the same? If they're committing crimes and getting away with it, why should I not do the same? So it's a complex matter. It's a, it's a very, um, very complex matter. Anyhow, we, we digress. Let's get back to the lecture now. So that was a very meaningful um, discussion and to our law enforcement um, person or persons. Um, thanks for the discussion. So we go back to the notion of um, discourse analysis now. And we did talk about the various organizational strategies. Um, you said I did not upload the lecture, right? For the last lecture was when last week? Thursday. Last week, Thursday? Let me Thursday. Just all right, so Thursday would have been, what date was Thursday again? Let me check in my- 11th, I think, the 11th. The 11th, all right, let me check in this um, because I could, the 11th. Hmm. Let's go from here. All right, so this from the tent. Mm -hmm. No, man, I would have. If it's clicked on, I would have done. Let me check my YouTube channel. That would have been... I'm almost sure I uploaded the lecture because I clicked on it. Usually, I don't click if I don't. You guys are SC, right? Most of you are doing supply chain. That would have been week three, lecture two. What I saw you uploaded was the... 
the other group that had the guest lecture, the one from UA. Yes. I can't remember her name. So I didn't upload yours. No, no. All right, hold on. So if this is the 11th, this would be lecture week three, lecture two. Um, let me look in my folder because I, I labeled them. It must have been an oversight on my part. Um, 21, 22. This would have been SC October. Oh yes, I didn't. I have lex right, right, right. So I have the I did week, I did the first one, but not the second one. You are correct. So let me just upload it right now. It doesn't take long to upload because you are correct. I didn't upload it. I might have clicked on it, but so let me upload that part. Upload this um this recording. Because I had uploaded the Tuesday, but not the Thursday. And sometimes it can remind me, people, um, I might forget. Uh, they keep me in these various meetings. My God, I'm in meetings forever. So let me. So I, I assume, Tashi, that you come from that side of the landscape. No, sir. That's our friends from our booth, yeah? Okay. Um, yeah. SE, come on. All right, so this is week week and you know the ironic thing is i i actually enjoy when i'm in jamaica i that's that's where i go to cut my hair i go to the this different dance and everything uh because i love dance you might not know this about me i love going to street dance uh -huh. yes when i go to uh, you, there's another side to me i just love going to the street dance and enjoying myself and I like to see certain people, you know, enjoy themselves. And we have a term in Jamaica, them dash out. And you it's don't, fun. You don't it's... type of that type of person. <laughs> Trust me. There's another You're side. not listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> that yes, was very I... evident. <laughs> Sorry, I not hear me. <laughs> no, man, I, I actually love street dance arts. This is come one. If this is... Yes. S Sir. Yes? Sir, fun you fact. Can you dance? You dance? Car. You see me down there fixing my car? Yeah. Yeah, most of my students, and they see me like, I remember one of my students saw me down to even, sir, what are you doing in place? I'm like, I need to ask you what you are doing at this place because this is where I grew up. Sir, you know sir, what the funny thing Yes. You know what the funny thing about it, sir? Yeah. Um, I was actually reason to go to my co-workers today. Uh-huh. Um, for, 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 for some people, I can understand why they might go paint it as a, you know what I say? But mm -hmm. I go there very often, you know, so we have the opportunity to, to understand the place. And it's actually a nice little community, you know. And I actually, no people don't know this, to say I want the, the, the CFS place, one half, the CFS place. Well, I say this to people so, that the community itself, this is SE, I'm going to, I it's uploaded, it's uploading. I'm going to put the put the link in the chat. I'll say this to people that I go there and I understand how to negotiate the space. So when I go to the community, for example, I don't get into discussions with people about gun and who are the done and I don't get into those discussions and I stay very far away from those kinds of people. So I'm not going to stand up on the corner with no who is who is a cook and who is this and who are liberty and what I don't get into those discussions. I stay very far. So I go there, I go to my barber. Sometimes I'm at my barber, you know, all kind of gangster come and we sit. Sometimes me and them sit down and reason. We actually talk because when they know that you're a teacher, or you're educated, they like to ask a lot of questions. So teach, what do you think about this? You know, I hear them sit down and have a discussion, but that's, that is as far as it goes. I don't go to, I don't invite anybody in my car and nobody can ask me for a lift. You're not going anywhere. I tell people, I don't go anywhere to get to people in my car. Sorry, unless you're a family or friends. I'm not carrying it to any place. We're not going anywhere like that. You're going to drive your own car and I'm going to in my own car. So I have certain rules, what I call rules of engagement, just to, because I grew up in this space, so I understand it. So I'm not going to say to somebody, you know, just go there and just interact with every and anybody. No, I wouldn't say that. But I go there, I've carried many of my uptown friends there. And I said to them, say, you're in one of the safest place. When it comes on the news, you know what the news media does? It's to kind of sensationalize certain things. Sometimes 
gunshot is firing and they make you look at like the entire community are tear down. Gunshot are fire. I remember one night I was there and this of course is my experience. It's going to be different from yours because I grew up there so I'm not friend by certain things. I year, This is years, years ago. I think this is 2016, 15, probably even 14. I stopped to buy food on what they call Wellington Street um, and my bridging, when I'm a bridging, you know, he and I, we were talking there and I hear, I hear, I heard some gunshots and I was like, hold on, I'm ready, man. And I said, teach, what are you talking about, man? Stand up, no, man. We there a chat, man. We just make a dose one reason. I mean, I said, but them just fire shot. I mean, somebody has scream out. Them just kill a man. Them just kill a man. I'm like, no, man, I'm ready. And my regent said, teach, relax yourself, no, man. But me tell you, if you relax yourself, man, me, me don't know what, what the thing. And me and him, they then we talk, talk, talk until the, the killer and his crew literally walked past where we were. I looked at the killer knowing that the killer and I grew up together. We used to play football on Regent Street. And I was like, okay, because he was sweating. You could see you could see that he was the person who did the act. And he went up with his crew. And, my, and I said to my brother, say, I, I, I really need to go. And he said, no, man, stay away, the man teach. And we, we spoke until about three in the morning. And then he said to me, you know why nobody, I told you to stay? Everybody wanted him dead. And I'm not endorsing him. So everybody, because he was one of the persons that was causing mayhem in the community. And I think he had killed both went to shoot somebody and killed a child so they wanted to get him because there's a kind of unwritten rule and this is not you know there's a kind of unwritten rule too with like with the, the security forces that even though they don't endorse the violence when certain things take place you have to push out the man the mother term like you push him out you have to get rid of the man because the man they the man they know no respect, you know, kill woman, you know, kill Pitney, you know, do this, you know, do that. So, as I said, I understand the rules of engagement in the space. I go to Tivoli, Denham Town, Hannah Town, Jungle. I have no issues in those. I, I'm there in those places. One o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock. Not sleeping though, not sleeping in anybody's house. With the Pandora road, I talk and then I jump in my car and I go home. Um, so I understand the space. Um, I love the space because I grew up there. Love go to dance. Love talk to my friends who I grew up with. My classmates are there. My nephews are there. One of my nephews at you know. I go there and I, you know, kind of interact with everybody and stuff. I know my, what I call social distance. I know the social distance from some people, some, some groups. I remember one other time I was at a corner and some man come to do some shootout. And I didn't know. And... I think weeks later, a bridge in my mind said to me, said, teach, where do you the corner, the man? You know, so we nearly dust the corner. I mean, said, which corner? And he might talk to me and he said, teach, be careful of the corner, man. He said, next time when you depend on the corner, this is how you stand up. And he was actually educating me about how you kind of look for movements and stuff, even though I grew up born in the space, you know. So as I said, it's, it's, my, it's a space that even if I come to Jamaica tomorrow, I'm there the next day because I'm going to link up my bob and say, yo, I want to shave. You know, I come line up my ear. If I get a car, I'm going to carry my car. I go, Ryan, I say, Ryan, you know, I come look up on the car for me. My cousin, them are going to call me. I say, yo, cause you're there in the place. My bridging, them are going to say, yo, you know, we keep a look at dancing. So you know, I pass through the bar and it's fun for me. I enjoy all of it. But I don't go to any other ghetto to do that. No other ghetto. I'm not going to no back to one. No, none of those other areas. Anyways, you guys keep distracting me. No more conversation about that. You are distracting me. Um, what? Where were we? Yes. Okay. I have uploaded the recording. Are you seeing it in the WhatsApp group? You might not see. You might not access it. No, because you know, of course, it takes some time. So it has 95 percent processing. It takes a while to upload onto YouTube. Um, and as I said before, if you see that we have done a lecture and I've have, I, and I haven't uploaded it, it could be that I forgot. So just remind me, I usually try to do it either the same night or even the day after so that it remains very fresh in your minds. All right. The what I want us to do, I want us to look at. All right. Hold on. There are some things that I wanted to I want you to actually write down first because you're going to add it to the homework. Let me just find it first. So for the homework, I think I'd ask you to go and I look. Choose one of your sources, right? And identify three organizational strategies, right? Right, people? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, right, sir. yes. Um, so we, we, what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you some additional information about that. And then we're going to do one or two together. 
and then you go home and kind of look at, uh, I'm trying to find it. Um, hey, just a question, you're having consultation tonight? Uh, not tonight, I, where I am, I have to go to a different location, so. Okay. Not tonight. Is it that you you want to talk? You want me to what you want do what you want me to help you with? Because I can start the consultation at eight thirty, and we use the last half the last half hour of the class and do consultation instead of going over into nine o'clock. Because where I'm going, I'm going. To, it's going to take me an hour to get there. So, and it's actually very cold. So I want to go, and the buses take a little while to, and I don't have any Uber money. Not tonight. <laughs> um, explanation of how they develop our support thesis. So if you, so just remind me at 8.30 to say, sir, let's do consultation, all right? Um, okay. Right. Yeah, we can do it. We can use the time too. All right, let me use a different, do I use a Siaga one? All right, let's do Siaga. Let's do Siaga. All right, 84.12, that's my number. All right, so I'm going to, Anybody has ever read Siago's article 8412? That's my number. 8412. Sure. That's, that's something to do like Sorry, that. Sorry, in class. Uh, no, but we never but we never looked at the organizational strategies though, which is a little bit different. We looked at, I think at the time we only looked at um main idea and so forth. But we never looked at the organize. Did we look at the organizational strategies? I don't remember us looking at that. No, sir. Yeah, I don't think we looked at the organizational strategies. It was just like the main idea. No, one hell no to find this article. No, I think I have it saved. I think this is it. Right, I have the article here. Um, I'm going to check the chat. I'm seeing quite a number of. All right, let me increase the font. All right, let me just look in the chat. Uh, all right. Well, people are talking about story time. Yes, it was story time. All right. So, what we want to do in this particular one is to identify at least three organizational strategies and explain how each strategy helps the writer to accomplish his purpose, all right? Um, we need some readers. Are you able to see my screen clearly? Yes, sir. All right, so let's, let's, let's read. So Anika, paragraph one, then Brittany, Brittany, paragraph two, Shane, paragraph three, one, two, three, four, and paragraph four, Cheryl Jadu Barrett. Go ahead, readers. <laughs> Looking out of any window or walking in any part of the Mona campus of the University of West Indies, it is readily noticeable that there are many more females. Yeah. Jesus. All right, let me read the paragraph one for you. Like for you, you're in a very noisy background. I'll do paragraph one and the other readers will continue. Looking out, at any, looking out of any window or walking in any part of the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies, it is readily, readily noticeable that there are many more female than male students. In fact, the latest figures reveal the exact, exact ratio, 82% female, 18% male, which I believe is the widest gap ever. In a university with four girls to every boy, it would seem that boys would do anything possible to be enrolled there. But that is not the case. It is not for the lack of desire on the part of boys to gain entry. It is merely because they lack the qualifications for admission. This is not a university phenomenon. Visit any rural or inner city secondary school at graduation time and check the much smaller number of boys than the girls in the graduating class. Next read -off. It is known that girls between 12 and 18 years old are generally two years more advanced than boys in scholastic aptitude. Two, the two genders do not level off until they are about to leave their 
tears. This is a product of the biological difference of the genders, but this alone is not the reason. The social environment so in which girls are raised seconds. defines their um, roles the more fully than for boys who originally are is not worth. Sorry, what happened? Sir, I think the recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought I, you were talking, so she stopped. Yeah, I, I, I clicked it off. You can finish, um, go from the social environment. So the social environment in which girls are raised define their roles more fully than for boys who are given a freer hand. Next reader. Come on, guys. I remember I called the name. I think this is Shane. He's going according to the participant list. Yes, I think it's now Shane Nugent or Cheryl Jadu Barrett. Cheryl, sir. I Sorry. just read. Sir. I just read. Yes, yeah, so next. Cheryl, no. Yes. Are defined rules. The defined rules for the girls are organized into systematic conformist behavior patterns and rules of socially acceptable conduct. Young girls and laughed that they can that they will be given recognitions and praise if they confirm confirm, confirm. yes this teachers these teachers then have to organize and conduct themselves to gain the recognition the the modes of organization of the life of a girl and valuable looks for learning and they adopt themselves more ready to the things learning process than boys okay my view is one of several it my view is only one of several from written accounts on this worrying situation Professor Errol Miller believes that the shift in teaching education from a male-dominated profession to female dominance in the post-war era had a direct impact on the underachievement of males in schools. The feminization of the methods of teaching, which is centered on a specific routine, has worked to the disadvantage of male students in what he calls the feminization of ac academia. Professor Mark Figueroa postulates similarly, because females are taught self-discipline, time management, and a sense of process, this reality spills over into the classroom setting where you will find females adapting to the organized regimented education system from which they benefit by doing what they were taught to do. Listen, be quiet, obedient and attentive. Males fail to adapt to this regiment. The cultural approach of the two sexes is different. Professor Barry Chavons thinks there is a perception among males that academics is girl stuff. The more positive response from girls also tends to encourage more courses to be offered which are attractive to females, leaving less options for males to find areas that they can, they can be passionate about. There are elements of the reality, there are elements of the reality in all of these views, but the issue is far more complex than dive than this and, and deserves a serious insightful study. What role does poverty play? Does an educated home environment encourage males to be academically trained? Is a single mother household a motivational force for daughters to seek higher education? The questions are endless, but what turns on the sizable imbalance in the education class? But what turns on this sizable imbalance in the educated class? Here is what the importance of a deeper understanding becomes critical. Sorry, I'm not sure why I'm reading madness. Here is where the importance of a deeper understanding becomes critical to the social development of the society. If four times as many graduates are girls compared to boys, how do educated girls find sufficient equally educated boys to make good partners? Is this mismatch leading to marrying down, creating partnerships where the much brighter female has to tolerate the far less educated male? In this is this relevant to the stability of the union? Are the children of such unions at risk in unstable settings? The single mother is an option for such women 
who may feel that in the absence of a suitable partner for an enduring union, the best choice is to find a suitable male stud to father her child and then proceed to pursue her career as a single mother. If the excessively educated female population is going this route, single motherhood as a deliberate choice, what will be the impact on the development of the family unit? Already with nearly 50% of Jamaican households falling in this category, is it a positive prospect for the social development of the society to passively observe the growth of single motherhood? If not, what can be done to provide a proper balance between educated males and females, which is more conducive to creating family stability? One solution is to maximize training of women in specific areas for which there's a great demand in industrial countries, teachers and nurses. The excess will migrate to find their educated partners rather than seek inferior options at home. The phenomenon of an excess of tertiary trained females is already sufficiently established that the results are being seen in today's society. Please mute your mics. Women are taking over many senior positions once considered the province of men and trend and the trend is growing. This will undoubtedly be a problem to men, but the society could benefit from the move to more women in, in, in administration, given their more diligent and systematic approach. As for the men, they are not really worried. The Jamaican man is, a is full of self-confidence that he can handle any Jamaican woman at any level, because while women might have more learning, they have the essential tool that is the great social leveler. Their ability, or perhaps more accurately, their reputation as studs. A well-known professor at Muna told me this appropriate story of her encounter with a strange man while she was enjoying a little relaxation alone on a beach at Elshire. After introducing himself as a bus conductor, he asked her where she worked. She said, at the university, at the university, at the university at Mona, I'm a doctor. Well, he replied expectantly, I run the route through there from August Town, so I can check you when I'm coming through. She was taken aback immediately by his presumption of a matchup between a doctor and a doctor. Obviously, from a position of ignorance, the difference between the difference would be would only be a single vowel, which tells its own story as to why males feel that there is little necessity to be educated. While it may be true that money makes the world go wrong, it is social interactions that provide oil or creates the rust. Here's a problem of social interaction dying to be explored to determine to what extent it may be gumming up the wheels of progress. Who will take up the charge? All right, so what is the article about? Can anybody tell me what is the article about? Persons were saying that we did this already, so you should be rushing to answer. What's the article about? It's about the imbalance um, in the institution where uh, with the amount of female students compared to the number of male students that are there. All right, so not the amount of the number of amount Sorry, is to use it with thing, right uh all right anybody else yes thanks for that Sir, speaking about the ratio between male and female attending universities mm -hmm. yes and what is it saying okay. about that ratio that more females wait let me see the part no, 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 no. I want for you to sir. speak to the article. If you write that and give me, I would give you zero, especially if you're going to realize oh. a response. Okay, sir. Uh, in yes. charge, it is saying that there is more male to female in terms of the um persons attending school. In so there is there is there are more males to female, or are there are more females to male? More females to male. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sir, and it's also saying it's not only because um it's also saying based on the ratio, it's because uh, females tend to be more qualified than the males mm -hmm. uh, what else what else is causing the females to be it's not necessarily qualified but be more ready for education or for the classroom well according to the article it's saying that females are like two years ahead of the males so they are more academically inclined what else is it saying what else makes the female quote unquote more academically inclined it, it is based of the environment that they're in or what they are accustomed to. Right. So and in other words, how they are. That, um, education is the key. Well, don't, as I said, be careful of including what is not in the article. Yes, it does what we call um, cliche statements. I will give you zero for those. Speak to the article. Um, don't give me those cliche statements. So what you're correct in the sense that 
women are socialized a particular way and they and as a result they are better prepared for the classroom all right anything else what else is is coming out in the article what else are you what else jump what else jumps out at you sir it says that males are um have more self confidence so that some of them don't really think that they need to be educated they can match up to any woman's standards matter if she's a doctor or is a doctor which organizational strategy would you say the writer is using in that instance? Example. Um, say that Egypt. again. I didn't hear it. Somebody was saying something I didn't hear. I heard like con, but I didn't hear anything else. I was saying comparison. So comparison shows what? What did you say about comparison again? Shows? Similarities. Are, is the writer showing similarities in that instance or showing a similarity? Contrast. 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 Not comparison. Contrast. Right. So the writer, what exactly, what difference is the writer pointing out there? Difference between the doctor, the doctor standard and the doctor. Right. And their approach to social interaction. And... Yeah. In other words, it's a kind of unequal yoke. And I know every time I mention this, students say, but sir, what if you meet somebody who you like and you know you can help the person? And I'm like, no, at my age, I'm not helping anybody. If you're not at my level, moving right along. Very sorry. I'm too old to be going investing in anybody for them to go back to school. And I'm not into that madness. And I think, well, that's just my personal view. I think that's what the writer is getting at, this notion that you are very accomplished. And in the case of the female, the female is very accomplished. And you, in the mind of the Jamaican man, her accomplishment does not beat his ability to sexually please her or that he's a stud. Um, so that is also being played out, uh, was also mentioned in the article. And I'm sure, um, how, the, how do the men in the class feel about that? Because I think as men, we, the, women sometimes assume that men do have standards. So once you're a female, you know, we are automatically attracted to you, which is not necessarily the case. Men too have standards. And if I'm a lecturer, college lecturer, university lecturer, I don't want my, 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 my woman to be selling a don't coronation market. Sorry, but that's just my view. I, I think if I'm going to be in a relationship, it should be that the person and I are at the same level. Some people might have a different view. As I said, I'm old. I'm almost 40. So my, my, I don't have much, much time <laughs> To, to, Sir, to finally, you're talking, you're always old. I am, yeah, I'm almost 40, so. Sir, you're still young. Still relatively young. young, relatively young. But what do you guys think about the whole notion of the doctor and the doctor and in terms of your own um, quote-unquote standards? So I don't think a doctor and a doctor will, will work out because one is more smarter than one. That is one. And also the income in which they both make probably won't meet up to um, the standard because a doctor must earn like what, over 100,000 or something. No, no, much, but lots more money Far than more a doctor. Than but sir, sir question. Yeah. question. Yes. Sir, I have a question. All right, looking at it from that way, Zin, but sorry, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sir, Mrs. Okay. Zin, so necessary. All right, but sir, look at it that this way. You know that you have some persons who actually um doing some jobs, but they actually have potential. Like some of them is just see it as a second income while going to school and. And they should get. So, and my thing is that they should find somebody with they would do that much their potential. So two potentials getting together. <laughs> That's just my thing. So you have potential, right. then you need to find somebody who has potential and they tell you grow. But I am not going to take you with your potential. I need for you to not just be a potential. I need for you to be the actual finished product because I have gone through that rigor already. As I said, it's just my personal view. Let, let's hear what some of the, 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 the other men think in the class. Dave, you're not saying anything. Talk to me, Dave. Sure. Hold on, let me hear Dave. Dave is yes, very sir. quiet. Yes, talk to wow. me. What, what's your view? Yeah, yeah, my view is um, the same thing, sir. As I said, um, I'm old for that right now to so start over with somebody. That, that don't make no sense. Yes, I'm too old, I, yeah. I think. And then know. for a doctor and a doctor, that don't make no sense because at the end of the day, she's not going to step up to her, to her 
education so she think about like where, where are you going to go and, 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 exactly where are you going to take our own interact with our with our friends our people, our, 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 exactly yeah, in a circle that, it's going to right, cause problems so, yeah, that cause problems that now yeah. they can't speak or exactly exactly yeah, you know so, so when they're at this the the the, the, the party or wherever yeah, the they are function and, wherever, function yeah, and, and she said oh you know i i um can you pass this or that or whatever yeah, eat with knife and fork yeah. or you're having a nice yeah. conversation and then they say yo dog day, like, oh, i know and I'm a, yeah yeah right a doctor, you know not a foot, no. yeah so she's gonna that say oh this is my husband and what kind of work is a doctor i'm a doctor no it's gonna work out yeah and equal you Unequal yes. yoke, yes, yes, yes. Um, the problem is when it's up here, in the sense that the whole difference in your job and your pain. Sorry, don't ask to say Dr. N, I can say he's a financial controller. <laughs> oh, that changed my name. <laughs> well, if you want to put it that way, um, if you want to print it up, well, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm going to say, so which bank do you work yeah, on? Yeah, they have to continue the lie, right? Across. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Bank do you work or, you know, you're going to ask additional questions and they're going to say, oh, one of the doctor might say, you know, I have some money and I want to invest it in some stocks. Yeah. Which stock yeah. should I invest it in? They might ask additional questions because yeah. people are not fools. It's like the other day I came across somebody um, and she said to me that she's, a, she's studying law at UWE. And I said, okay, first of all, the, 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 the expression was off. So instead of saying H-A-V-E, she, she wrote o, O-F, off, instead of saying have. And I'm like, this person is lying. I'm like, I don't know if because I'm a college lecturer, you're trying to kind of beef up. But I'm saying, you don't understand. I teach writing. I know I can just look at your writing and make a determination. It's not that I'm expecting you to be in terms of perfect English, but... I can just look and basic errors tells me that you're not studying law because to get into law at UA, first of all, you need to have at least ones at minimum in CXC and two, at least two ones or something at Cape level or at A level. So I know that you're not in law, you know, but anyways, as I say, I just have a different, uh, a, a total different um, view. I know some, and females don't like when men feel this way. Females tend to, you know, they want us to lower our standards, but they don't want to lower theirs. It's a very strange thing. Tache, you were about to say something, I, I think, and I cut you off. Um, sir, I was just going to ask one thing, because you, hmm. you said level. So I just wanted clarity. What do you mean by level? So was it, was, were you mentioning... Um, are you speaking to money? No, not necessarily money. It's not necessarily money. about money. Yeah. So I have a yeah, master's degree. So I have a first degree and I have a master's degree. I have two postgraduate diploma. I've been working as a professional for a number of years. I'm, I also work in marketing. I'm a published author. Um, I have certain accomplishments. What do you have? That's what I would ask her. What do you have? Yeah. It can't be that you, the, sir, the thing that you sir, have is that you sell a market. When I know if you, if you come across, there is this guy who do um, videos on TikTok where <laughs> when I think him a bash females, but him always just him just from but like he just straight. Out. He's probably he's probably he just he's probably just the male version of Miss Kitty. He's probably yeah, just well, a male. Guy will play him yeah, I know who you're talking. I never remember his name. He, yeah, him, he always tell the truth. The truth but he's probably the female so, version um, of Miss Kitty. Um, who do who do say? It's just that the same thing. Because Miss Kitty, but Miss Kitty is correct too. They love Miss Kitty, but Kitty is correct. If you are a woman and you have certain things, all right, so this is how it goes. My thing is that you don't get in a relationship with somebody who can't help you. If the person is worse off, then it doesn't make sense. That doesn't, that it doesn't make sense in my mind. So you are poor and I am poor and the two are just going to join together as poor and we just, at most of the time, producing all kinds of children. To me, that doesn't make sense. If remember, a relationship is a contract, you know, it's like a, it's a, it's a kind of contract between you and the person. So People are investing time, not just money, time, you know, efforts, whatever, whatever. And if it is that I'm going to invest in a relationship, then I should be getting something out of it. Um, and I think the article goes to the heart of that and talking about the various imbalances that happen really from, from when, from socialization, the way how men, the way how boys and girls are socialized and how it plays out in the society. And when sometimes you find women saying that men are emotionless and they don't care and they don't show feelings, I always go back, who raised boys? Mothers do. 
And the same mothers we say if the child, if the, if the son ever bought, hey boy, stop in Isaiah, girl. Make sure you're in a ball, in a boy. And, you know, so he grows up thinking that he must be tough, emotionless, and sometimes become quite unfeeling um, towards, so he doesn't get the opportunity or he doesn't learn how to express himself, not even to his wife or to his girlfriend or to his various concubines because of how he was socialized. Can you think of some of the organizational strategies in the article? So first of all, remind me about the organizational strategies. Let's start there. What are some of the organizational strategies that we mentioned in the previous class? Uh, Tevon Mercy is not one of them. So we like classification and process analysis. Yeah, so we said classification, we said process analysis. Anything else? Contrast. 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 Cause and effect. Definition. Examples, illustration, and anecdotes. Yes, illustration, anecdotes. Do we see any? Oh yes, I, I don't know if I told you this. Um, mute your mic, please. Uh, somebody's mic is unmuted. Um, I I don't think I told you about exemplification. Let me just put it in the chat. Because I don't think that was on the exemplify, exemplification slash illustration slash examples. You have what is called a specific example, a typical example, and a hypothetical example. Um, so do we see any, any instance where there's a kind of illustration or a, a typical example being used as one organizational strategy? Everybody's silent. All right, all right, do you see definition being used? Sir, for the yes, part sir. where if they give an yeah. example of her walking on the beach and, and she recounted the story of um, the doctor, and that, would that be, wouldn't be. Right, a specific, yeah. That would be a specific example because we're talking about something okay. that really happened. A typical example is something that has happened repeatedly over time and it becomes quote unquote, the norm, all right? Um, so that would be a specific example. Someone else was saying something. Go ahead. All right. Um, let's pause here. The consultation, anybody wants to like show me something that you have been working on or you want clarity on something or talk to me. Sir, when are you going to assist us with looking at the evidence? All right, so share screen. If you want me to look at it, share screen. I'm, I'm teaching you all the way back to, to that end. That's why I haven't done it as yet. Okay, sir, I'm going to share my okay. screen. All right, you have to scroll up for me so I can go from the top so I get a sense of the paper. Um, where's the research question? Yeah, you should not have- Sorry, remember you tell us to, to remove the broader narrative copy and keep the answer and the thesis. No, no, I said I keep, no, the, the research, the research question you need. So you need a research question. Okay. But it's okay, go back up for me. Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, so reasons for workplace safety in manufacturing companies, preventing industrial accidents, avoiding unexpected expenses, and increasing workforce productivity are some of the reasons. All right, so let, which, um, which one do you want me to look at? Preventing accident, industrial accidents is one of the reasons for workplace safety in manufacturing companies.
Um, so the first piece of evidence is not bad, it's just that it's not properly phrased. And is this paraphrase or is it that you use the exact words of the author? Sir, it was paraphrased. All right, so remove the full stop at accidents and put it outside for me. Outside of the bracket. All right, so Taylor and Francis online, I don't understand that. So that's the name of the, the source. The name of it. So somebody. I think it's from a judge. But why the word online? Is that is online a part of the person's last yes, name? It, yes, it was a part of it. Can you go to your reference list? Let me see your reference list so I can see the actual source itself. Okay. This is it. Sorry. That could not be it because I'm seeing different last names there. So where is that source that you? cited i don't see taylor and whatever in on this reference list where is taylor and and thing i i'm wondering if i changed it and i didn't put it in you have to sir it's the same one sir it's it, it's yeah. then you're not putting any don't cite it, it properly because this is a this then maybe is, sir maybe it's right here but i think it is this is the so so then I think it's a citation probably to fix, right? Right, because but you're I supposed think to it's choose it's only the right. last all right. Go back now. Let me see if the year is, is, is the same year. Right. So you need to cite only the two last names, which is that last name okay. and the Latala um comma 2016. Is the two last names you're supposed to cite? The ampersand and and then the other Natala, right? The font is off. Uh, this doesn't look like Times New Romans. So the phrasing is, is and the word is statistics, not statistic. And it will be statistics show, not statistics shows. So the paper is about Poland. Yeah, citing two sources about Poland. All right, so hold on. So statistics showed that 23 of fatal accidents happened before they due to improper use of machinery. Studies done by travelers. Who are these travelers? Who did the study? The travelers did the study. Is it? Yes, sir. That's what he said. Because this is another source that we use, and they said um, when they're after they're showing everything, they said that the study was done by travelers. That's the only thing it said. It didn't say anything else. Oh, well, I'm not sure pro you're properly interpreting the source. Go back to the topic sentence. Let me look at something. Not there, one topic sentence, I don't need to say all the other ones because I'm looking at them in relation oh, sir, to Here it is. No, right. I know, I, I can't read this. Remember, I'm the one who teach you, right? So I know where the topic sentence is. I'm just trying to match the evidence with the topics and preventing industrial accidents. All right, so I would want A to be a definition of industrial accidents. I think I would want to know what you consider to, to, to be industrial accidents. So put your cursor at at O, yes, I press enter. And just write it. So I'm just going to write it and then fix it up. It's okay, so I just want to make note. Yeah, so industrial access. The only thing I'm seeing, well, the evidence, really what I'm seeing in the evidence is you're focusing on. The accidents itself, but what I'm not getting is I don't see the relationship between how the workplace safety prevents the industrial accidents. That's what I'm not seeing. Sorry, so what about sir, but what about it says putting in warning device signals 
isn't that wouldn't that be a part of them doing things to prevent the accidents and about doing adequate training and putting in commercial masks, wearing gloves? Wouldn't that be considered like measures placed in, put in place to prevent the industrial accidents? All right, hold on. Let me just look at this thing again. What else do is the way you phrase it right so it could be that you could say something like whatever this person's first name is and latala um noted or something like that noted that when warning devices signal signs and ins inspecting machines are mm -hmm installed or implemented in uh, all right the, the other issue i'm having to you don't mention not even one manufacturing company here i don't get the name of one manufacturing company because you're saying safety in manufacturing companies right and i don't get one example because what the examples what these are focusing on are industrial accidents and workplace safety but remember the workplace safety is in manufacturing company so it means that the studies or the, the, the sources or the ex evidence that you're going to use must be um, citing um, those relating to in the, um, to manufacturing companies so let me let me make up an example and tell you so so Latala in a study done by Latala and whatever that person name is 2016 they discovered that Give me an example of a manufacturing company. They discovered that when Grace Commodity, a company that produces, that manufactures plastic bags, put in warning devices, signal signs and inspecting machine, the rate of, mm -hmm. Of accidents on the work site or in the workplace reduced by 20% or something like that. You see what I mean? So, in other words, okay. they don't mention the, yes, the manufacturing sir. companies part is, is, is kind of absent because all I'm getting is industrial accidents and workplace safety, but not within the context of manufacturing companies. Make sense? Okay, yeah. Okay, sir. Yes. Because what I was thinking about, sir, when we were doing is that I'm saying that with most manufacturing companies, you have machines, mm -hmm. right? So, so, and most of the times you have where majority is that the machines in watch not being able to like take safety measures and looking after the machine and knowing about the machine can actually cause most of the accidents within these manufacturing companies. So that's the reason why I would have started about the machine, but I get what you're saying, sir, and we can- but That is good enough, but it's, you it. have to link it to specific, like, like, so in other words, I would have um, in B, I would have a name of a specific manufacturing company different from another one in C, okay. different from another one in D. That's what I would do because the focus of my paper is that I am trying to educate my audience, saying to them that when manufacturing companies do these particular things, it, it, it ensures workplace safety. Okay. So when they implement all of these things, okay, then it prevents industrial accidents. Is you know what I mean? Yes, sir. I understand what you're saying. Okay, all right. All right, anybody else wants to share? I guess I can share. Um, sir. Yes, go ahead, share yeah, before for Before the person share. No, mm -hmm. sir, I wanted to ask you something about the, I saw something about APA writing in the, in Canvas. It, it's 5% you know, of my course. Yes, 5% okay. of my course. Okay. All right, go ahead, the person who said that she's going to share.
All right, so let's go to the top. Okay, sir. Remove the word evidence. Backspace one more. It's okay. So remove the word evidence there. Yes. All right. So go up. Mm -hmm. All right. So you actually have reached very far, actually. So so I'm not looking at the first one because the first one is incomplete. It only has two. And you should both you must have A, B, C or A, B, C, D. So let's go to a D one. So if you want me to look at that one, put all of that on us on the on just go to put your cursor at listening. Put the cursor at listening. Put the cursor at listening. The beginning of listening. Press enter until it's on a separate page. Scroll up now so I can see everything in its totality. All right. So listening the vulnerability of climate change is another role of renewable energy in Jamaica. All right. And I can go down to the, the last um, topic sentence, if you wish. All right, hold on. Listening the vulnerability of climate change. I don't know if you have phrased it correctly, lessening the vulnerability of climate change or vulnerability to climate change or reducing the I believe we um on the previous in previous sessions you were trying to come up with a word and we had stopped at listening for the time being. Right, because it seems a little that. yeah, it sounds a little bit awkward lessening the vulnerability. I know what you're trying to say, but I'm not sure it has been said the best way. You want to go down to the next one then, sir? Yeah, let's look at the other one. All right, so put your cursor at improving and then let it play on one page by itself. All right, you guys are way ahead though. I like that. All right, so improving energy security. This one is easier too. So in other words, you're telling me how um, renewable energy can be used to improve energy security, right? Yes, so sir. How a renewable energy. Mm, you have Boswire two times. Um, is is that a newspaper? It's not a newspaper. What is it? It's uh, it's not a newspaper. I think it's a web page. So is it there? No, so this, it's no like author? a magazine. Sorry, it's like a magazine. It's an authored magazine. I'd have to look back again because I came off it for a while. Okay, but I use. Two from mine so that we can split it up as a door. As you said, we're not to go over six, but no less than four. So each member got um, two sources to use mm -hmm. for the topic sentence. All right. What I would do in A is to define energy security. That's what I would want A to be. It's hard to define it, um, sir, because the definition is in another source outside of the six. Um, then, then probably you need to use that source. <laughs> Instead of using Buzzwire two times, probably, probably, mm. probably that source is better than Buzzwire because if it yeah, is, a, if it has a definition of energy, because the challenge I'm having is I'm not seeing how the renewable energy improves energy security because one, you haven't told me what you mean by energy security. Okay, so you need because, a definition in order to right because the definition the right because the definition now would provide the context in which. The evidence is built. So if you say energy security means that we are no longer importing like um, barrels of oil or whatever it is, then I am now going to be able to say, okay, based on this definition, now I understand the, the, the direction of the pieces of evidence. And that's, Sorry, a, that's if what I can I'm, give a, I'm in the group. So if I can give a raw version, not a, 
a Google meaning of energy security. All right, just like how um, majority of community in Jamaica loses power on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So um, with, with renewable energy, we won't have this kind of uh, um, electricity disconnection, basically. But you're not defining energy security, though. Mm -hmm. That's not a definition of energy security. So I'm just telling you what I mean. That's why I say a raw version. No, man, that's not a raw version. That very, 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 very raw, raw, raw. <laughs> Sir. All right. yes. Energy security is really having uninterrupted supply of um, power or the, the renewable energy. But my challenge the definition that is in the other source don't really have anything about the construction of the other power plants and the other plans that the government So what you probably need to do then is to look back, probably this is where it might not be the best source, or and then look to see if the source itself can be used elsewhere in the paper. So you can get actually get a definition plus use it elsewhere in your in your paper. Sir, so the definition that we find for anything that we're defining it has to be from a specific source. It has to be from the source that you're you're using. One of the it, be, it, be it must be one six. of the sources. Either one of the four or one of the six or one of the five. So Mrs. Um Riley is very correct. Larry, Riley Lamont is very correct in terms of understanding that she cannot use another a source number seven for the definition. So this is where now a lot of calculated decisions have to be made by the group in terms of um, probably we need to go back and look at the types of sources we're using. We probably need to find better sources and all of that. Have you guys spoken to any, have you called JPS or any energy company or anything just to have a conversation about what you're writing? Because they, they sometimes can help you to understand it as well, you know. Because, for example, they could give you a layman's definition of energy security that they don't necessarily need to cite a source. Providing that they're they telling me, sir, if somebody gives us a definition, we don't have to cite. Listen, this is what the I'm person saying. saying. No, listen to what I'm saying. So let's just say that you call JPS or uh, a company that, uh, and they, you're having a conversation with the person, right? And they, through the conversation with the person or persons, you are able to formulate a definition or they are able to give you a definition. That is not a textbook definition. Off the record, you can see, once this is not in any book, you can. Because I, how would okay. I know, that, how would I know that you had the conversation? I wouldn't know unless you tell me. The only way I can know is unless when I up, when you upload your document to turn it in and I see it, turn it in, flags it now. I can't say, but hold on. Um, this definition came from somewhere. And if you say to me, sir, sir, I just had a conversation. I'm going to say, no, the conversation you had with the person, the person got it from a source. But let us say that the conversation, you got the definition, but it's not coming from any textbook. But based on their level of expertise, they're able to formulate a definition. They can put it in. I didn't know, sir, because I thought everything, I thought the expository essay is supposed it's to an be an unethical way. Based. No, it's an, it is evidence-based because you're getting it from an expert. But if we're not so citing right. it, so it is an unethical method that I've just started that I should probably should not have done, but you can't do it. You can't Thank you do for it. the slip of the <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I can teach you some of the little tricks and trades. Because I used to do it in my papers too when I had to write uh, papers, you know. Yeah, so 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 probably that's that probably that's the solution to the definition of energy source. Let me go to one of your other topic sentence. Even if you don't have the evidence, let me look. Just to see, because it could be that for each body paragraph, you need to provide some context. So I would define energy security. Let me see the second topic sentence or this topic sentence. Go up. I'm just seeing the evidence. I'm not seeing the topic sentence for this one. I'm missing the vulnerability. Climate change. I think you have a definition of climate change and reducing dependence on. I would probably define fossil fuels and give examples of it. And then show. Okay, no, sir the renewable energy now is going to reduce the dependence on fossil fuel. So let's just say fossil fuel is oil, um, diesel. You know, we use diesel, for example, diesel is used to whatever, whatever. However, um, if we use, um, let us say, you know, greenhouse, whatever, 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 this will reduce the, the number of barrel shipments to Jamaica or whatever it is. I'm just kind of making it up because I don't know the science behind it. Okay, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a good night, everybody. I must run because...
I'm one O away from home. <laughs> All right, next week, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Safe journey. All right, thanks, guys. All right, sir. Good, All right, good, good night, sir. Take care. Yes, yes, yes. And just Safe if journey, anything, sir. you can. Yes, thanks. If anything, you can put your questions in the chat, and I'll try to respond. Sir. Not in the chat, okay. in the WhatsApp group. I mean, yes. Okay, you, know, you, are, you, you are giving us an homework. Can you stop? Them? No, man. Let the homework say because I, what okay. I want to do, I want to walk you through it fully first before you do it. Because what you're you're going to actually do it with your one of your sources, so I have to walk you through it and feel comfortably in my head that you are able to do it. So I let's hold off on the homework first, okay? Okay, sir. All right. All right, sir. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good night. All right. Oh, I should. Have